Second time in the last couple of weeks he's gotten hit pretty high and uh, Vaughn just not happy and Lopez talking to Vaughn and now the infielders coming in and White Sox bench has emptied. And here come both dugouts and it's getting the two managers getting into it. Well I'm not sure Rocco wants any piece of Miguel Cairo. Ethan Katz playing the peacemaker. But the context here too is this is the second time Vaughn's been hit up near the head in the last couple of weeks and intentional or not guys don't like it. No you can certainly understand that but if Lopez wants to stay in his game he better move back to where he's doing his job and right now as they drift away the Sox whole team is drifting toward the twin team. There's a little pushing and shoving but that's about it at this point and I hope the umpires come to that conclusion you leave everybody in They're They're warning both benches but that's at this point that won't come to too much but a warning has been issued to both benches. Uh, here comes Miguel and then he'll chat with the home plate umpire. And are they saying they're throwing out Miguel Cairo. I think so. And uh, yeah Lopez was immediately you know he didn't like that Vaughn kind of looked at him. And uh, Correa and Vaughn talk it over so Miguel Cairo the acting manager I believe is out. Did he foul the ball off. It was catcher's interference I think. Oh foul. yeah. You know John Flaherty looked it up when we did the series on the the two series on the West Coast I believe that the Yankees lead baseball in catchers interferences with about 12 which is close to like a record. And you see Aaron Boone arguing. Uh, I mean we'll see a replay I'm sure but uh, Hickey immediately looked over at the dugout and said no there was no interference here. Ah, he gets thrown out. All the frustration is going to bubble over right now. This has been a tough month and a half for Aaron Boone watching his team play the way it's played. And he is upset with that catcher's interference call. Well, not sure if you could really tell there. You've got to tell here. You see Higgy reaching. Uh, I did not see interference. I saw Higgy reaching for the ball, but it looked more like a foul ball. I don't believe that catcher's interference is a reviewable call. No, it is. It is a reviewable call, catcher's interference. And that's the problem. That's why Boone is so upset because they charged him with a challenge before, and he can't mm -hmm. challenge that play right now. That's why he got so upset. He said, you gave me a challenge when I just wanted you to look. Outside corner for a strike. And David Bell comes out of the Reds' dugout. And he is yelling at our home plate umpire Carlos Torres and he's been ejected. And I think Bell talking about balls and strikes here on a night where the Reds could not buy a strike that was on the league wide around the league. Umpires are very good especially you know east to west. So in and out they don't miss a lot of pitches off the plate. I feel like maybe more up and down is where the mistakes are made. The umpires had a, a meeting amongst themselves for a while nobody was ejected this looks like a Jeff warning? Nelson giving a warning to Jimmy Garcia that if you hit anybody you're going to be gone and I think John Schneider wants to come out and get clarification did you just give warnings he just did look at him he pointed to both both dugouts and I think Schneider just said that's really bad if mm -hmm. I was reading his lips correctly so Nelson feels that he needs to keep a lid on it by issuing warnings which in my mind usually is not not in this situation I don't know that warnings ever really yeah. do what they are intended to do but warnings have been issued nobody was ejected a long conference that whole break the whole time we were away the four umpires were meeting and had a conference that, that's true that's it true is not in the fifth after he's really been going along just fine 
Rogers went away. And he wants to run down to first to argue with Hunter Wendell's step. Be careful, he's going to kick him out. Buddy's trying to stop him, and he just got run. He didn't stop walking at him, and Brendan Rodgers, this isn't, you know, this is how frustrated the Rockies are right now. So I've never seen Brendan that demonstrative. I think Brendan was trying to say it, that's happened to him twice tonight, because he also in the first inning. Oh, he, he held go. up. Yeah, I, he I, I understand go. why he's saying that. I don't blame you, Brendan. When he speaks, also, very eloquent young man, very bright young man. Marte takes strike one against uh -oh, he's got, yeah. and he as just soon, got tossed at the plate. As soon as he threw up the two fingers, like that's the second time you've called the pitch down there, that's an automatic ejection. I mean, you, Hunter Windlestaff's not going to put up with that. But he's going to throw out Torrey, too. Well, there goes Torrey. He got Brendan Rodgers last night. It's three and two nights. He just said you're better than that. So Marte at the plate didn't like this strike call. No, he, thought, he didn't like one earlier. He thought that was low. So watch him throw the two fingers up. This is what gets him right there. That, yeah. So you've made that call. And that's one of the first things you learn in, in pro ball is you can't do that to the umpire, right? I, I, and I think, and I, I'm trying to read lips, which I'm terrible at, but I, I think Hunter Wendelstead almost said what you did. It's like, you know you can't. Yes, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Checks the swing, appeal, he wins. <laughs> David Bell didn't like that at all. He's coming out of the dugout now, and he's giving Jeff Nelson an earful. And now he wants to go down to first base and talk to Manny Gonzalez. David Bell is irate. Remember, Bell got tossed in the latest stage of the game during the Cubs series in Wrigley. I believe that also came on the heels of a Barrero event. I don't think that he's been ejected yet, has he? I did not see that signal. I didn't see it either, and I have to say that Jeff Nelson has given him quite a long rope. Did he go? Yeah, remember the rule book says nothing about crossing the plane of the plate or breaking your wrist. It's a judgment call on the part of the umpire. Did he attempt to hit the pitch, period? There he goes. It's taken the throw down. It's going to be a strikeout according to the home plate umpire. Reynolds can't believe it. They will not challenge. It's a stolen base. But Shelton is furious and he just got thrown out because you could see that did not look like a strike to Reynolds. And you think it's a swinging strike appeal. Yeah I think that that's what Derek Shelton's arguing right there. there there's no harm in asking for help. Ask for help from the first base umpire. Just get him to, he's got a better angle on the check swing, and, and the pitch was nowhere near the strike zone. Furious at uh, Clint Vondrack that he didn't ask Scott Berry for help at first base. I couldn't tell whether the home plate umpire indicated he thought that Reynolds swung or not. But the home, the uh, crew chief, because Conroy is making sure he leaves. Well, we've had some action since we last saw you. Chad Pinder's been thrown out of the game. He, of course, is the guy who hit that ball down the line that was called foul. He is not happy. Hey, I got a question. Why'd you go down there and follow it? Don't ask me. Why's that? See ya. Well, excuse me? That's pretty weak. Mark Kotze quickly got out there. But Pinder is gone for the afternoon. And a runner in scoring position. Things got to go your way, but he's been consistent. Not 
sure what we're, uh, what we're checking out here. On Culpo, the crew chief going down to John Tumpey, the first base umpire. Did this ball hit him? Maybe Jimenez said to the dugout that it did. It possibly could have, but as it skips by, maybe off the top of the shoe. He had to say something to the dugout because it, did, it looked like he turned and looked in there, and then they asked. Tito came out. But he is hot. Now they're getting everybody involved. Well, it's to see if anybody else happened to see it. That would be awfully tough to see. This is as close as we can get. It's going to go down. It's going to skip in front of the foot, but does it catch it as it goes by into the catcher's glove because he catched it cleanly? It may have it came off the top. It's hard to tell. It does tell. look like his foot moved a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it looked like it, it skipped up, but uh, can they see that on a replay? Oh, uh oh. But they're not allowing it. Tell you what, I have never seen Tito lose his cool like this. He is incensed. Like I've never seen him uh, like uh, this. That is, that's true. The only thing we can surmise is that Ron Culpa said that they didn't ask for a it challenge in the allotted time. That, that's the only thing I could think of. And Tito basically was saying that we did. Now here comes Zepera coming in there. He wants to know if it was a strike then. Oh, now Juan Copa is uh, at his wits end. Well, don't you just wish they were all mic'd up? <laughs> You know, first off, I'm sure Ryan Tepera does not like the fact he's had to wait around all this time. He's trying to get a few extra throws in. That's what the part of it is. He's saying, if I'm going to wait that long, I should be able to throw some pitches. I mean, it's almost five minutes since his last pitch. He hasn't thrown anything. Oh, and now Nevin is tossed. The Colt was two for two here. Yeah, his expression says it all. Give me an idea what you think started all this. Francona thought he got hit. He wanted them to look at it. I, you know, they, they called a the ball and there was an appeal down to third base. And Tepera's still getting his throw in, and after all, <laughs> lights out as a closer. Maybe the back injury or knees, something happened at his elbow dropped. The sinker wasn't there all over the place. And once that elbow. Looks like Boone's going to get yeah. thrown out. He's still arguing about Andujar. I'll give him credit. Moscoso's Moscoso is giving him some time. You know, supposed to argue balls and strikes. 
Andy Fletcher, the crew chief, separates him and says, all right, go back to the dugout. They gave him a lot of room there, Jeff. Looks like he's trying to get thrown out. Unless he has been thrown out already, because there's no way they'd give him that much latitude. Right, exactly. I don't think you're allowed to argue balls and strikes anyway. I mean, it's an immediate, immediate ejection. Yeah, he was thrown out. That, that's why. Yeah, right there, they threw him out, and then he came out and said his piece. And he struck him out with a curveball to end the inning. Very upset, and he's been tossed out of the game. Just couldn't. And then this how the, the inning ends. This is not a smart move by Miles Straw. He disagreed with him, but he said so. World Series champion twins in 91, and Guthrie does not agree with that call from the whole plate umpire, Andy Fletcher. It's a pretty good pitch. Backdoor slider, probably low. Person matters. That's Andy Fletcher, the home plate umpire. Schwarber, the first Philly to hit at least 40 home runs since Ryan Howard. And now Andy Fletcher has had enough. Yep. Yeah, I think he got Kevin Long, the hitting coach. They're chirping over in that dugout. I'm pretty sure he got Kevin Long. Well, I'm not a lip reader, but he's saying, don't worry about the guys saying something. Worry about calling balls and strikes. So Kevin Long will get to enjoy our broadcast there for the rest of this game. He's back after the home run and now is barking at Brian Knight. And he has been tossed from this game and he's going to get his money's worth. He thought he made the pitch. Brian Knight tossing Cole from the game. A game now tied at four. Down low. Half a swing. Struck him out. Did he throw him out? He might have got run. <laughs> and David Ross. This makes zero sense to me. What? If he has been ejected, then uh, yeah, that's uh, that's incredible. Uh, right. And I don't know what was said, and I don't care what was said. Mm -hmm. Like, th that's the kind of stuff, Boob, that I have a big issue with umpires. An epic standoff between Robbie Ray and Luke Weaver, reliever for the Royals. These two were teammates in Arizona in 2019. What do we think? Am I a text? Well, is it, is it is it fair that we were out there right now, but he was just getting a massage from the hammer. One of his teammates came out trying oh, to help him out. Robbie has had no help at all. No. This is uh, shades of one of the great anthem standoffs of all time. It was game six of the 2013 <laughs> NLCS. Joe Kelly of the Cardinals, Scott Van Slyke of the Dodgers, and it was the home plate umpire who had to break it up for first pitch. Well, these two aren't going anywhere. A couple of former teammates in Arizona. Oh, oh, Marco, Marco, some help. Yeah, Marco, yes, that's very important. Sunblock, yep. absolutely. Safety first. <laughs> yeah, Luke is not. Luke is saying, I, I, where's my help? Well, he just I had a massage, a massage out there. But, you know, SPF's flow. Will home plate umpire Adrian Johnson have to break it up? He will. Oh, boy. Yes, he will. <laughs> oh, he's looking out <laughs> towards Weaver. Is this in the umpire handbook? He's. Now our third base umpire is telling both of these guys, you got to beat feet. And <laughs> nobody wants to give in. They're, <laughs> they're not moving. They're not moving. Marvin Hudson, the third base umpire, <laughs> trying to make it happen. So we have a slight delay. <laughs> Robbie has his sunscreen, so he's oh, in good shape. Oh, Robbie won! Yes, Robbie there. won! <laughs> he won! <laughs> A test of wills. The showers as well. First a look at the third base umpire on the check swing call. And so there's a, there's some heat coming from the dugout. I thought that was good enough. Watch this again. As Miguel Cairo went out to make the pitching change, he was jawing at Brennan Miller. 
and then he got his money's worth with a home plate umpire Jansen Visconti as well. to get run here. That's one of those where frustration bubbles over for the season and for a lot of things for, for Miguel Cairo. Yeah. And, and he was unhappy with Brendan Miller at third base and then I'm pretty sure I didn't see Visconti make any sign. He did. But again he was already thrown out so you don't have to throw him out twice. That's right. Anson Visconti for the most part has had a pretty strong strike zone. I thought he, I thought he was very good behind. That was off of Pablo Lopez made it 4 three at that point in time. Ball outside that was his and a balk. OK. So be careful Richard. Richard not uh, in love with the balk call by first base umpire John Tumpain. He said that's a set caught up like that. That's a tough pitch to touch. And now another balk. Oh boy. Wow. Flyers going to lose it here. Yeah. And now Donnie's out to defend Richard Blyer. Lewin <laughs> Diaz playing a little defense on Blyer as well. Well, this is a, a good job of, of Donnie coming out to de-escalate the situation. I, I, the first one I thought was a balk. We'll see how this one looks. I mean, I, I thought that one possibly could have set a little. I mean, that could have set right there. So he did oh it my. again. He did it again. He called another ball. The first three box of his career, and now Donnie yeah. is he losing it, and he just got thrown out of the game. And here comes the first base umpire, John Tampain, who made all three of those ball calls. Yeah, get your money's worth right here. You got nine games left. Let it fly. He's still protecting his guys. He knows that he's not coming back. He's still doing what he needs to do. I have chills watching that actually. That's a, he, he stopped on that one. I thought. I thought that one. I thought that one wasn't. At this point, it's almost like Tom Payne's just trying to make a point. To ground out and end the inning after balking, and now he's been thrown out of the game after balking McNeil to second, third, and home, and Blyer's got words for the home plate umpire now as well. Yeah, well, he's telling them, I've had three balks in my entire career. We're going to step aside, and uh, if anything else happens, we'll tidy that up for you when we come back. Oh, yeah. Give it to him. Wow. He does. Fastball at the knee. And he's been ejected from the ball game by Alan Porter. Rojas is tossed. Rojas not happy. Slams the bat. Slams the helmet. Rojas not happy with it. Slamming the bat. The slam of the bat. The toss of the helmet. Right away ejected by Alan Porter on the spot. Yeah, but Alan Porter was having enough of it. Tossed him. Roy Lavello gets a little bit right here. As his head was turned when Porter tossed him and then Lavello would get ejected. Usually that's a fine. But at the same time to TK's point you'll see hitters slam their hat the helmet slam their bat and the umpire will point to the player.